what happens is you're given color of one compound. You need to find the colors of the other or other, wait, other, I was going to say other or other. Other one compound or other multiple compounds. Uh, and you go through a certain procedure. First, you look, what I would do, you look at the spectrochemical series. And find uh, delta. So, and you compare the delta of the two compounds. Does delta, you want to ask yourself, does delta increase or decrease? Then from there, you look at lambda. Remember, lambda is inversely proportional to delta. So if one goes up, the other goes down. So if I follow that, if lambda goes up or down, I want to know if, uh, if delta goes up or down, I want to know if lambda goes down or up. And then you look at the color wheel. For the color change. Okay, how does that work? Uh, let me do a little example. Let's say... Let's say that one I was just working on a moment ago. Let's say if we had MnOH4, and this went to MnOx2. And I tell you that this one is orange. And I want to know, let me get my color wheel out so I can show you. I want to know basically though, is this one red or uh, yellow? That's my question, okay? And that's a pretty typical sort of question when you're comparing two. So let's follow our order. First, let's start with delta. You get your spectrochemical series out. Where the heck did I put that? Let me get my spectrochemical series out. Is delta going up or down? It's going from here to here. So it's going up. So, delta goes up, what happens to lambda? Yeah. Down, so now once we have that, we go straight to our color wheel. So let me flip over to the color wheel. Uh, I don't know, where did I put that thing? Uh, I saw it a moment ago. It was here, here it is. Delta goes down, we started at orange, has to be yellow. I mean lambda, I'm sorry, lambda goes down, and these are lambda values, so we're going down to yellow. And that's it. If you're given more than one compound, put the compounds in order of the ligand. Put them in order of the ligand, and then uh, just march down the color wheel or march up the color wheel. Yes? What type of question is it where we'd have to answer using the opposite color? Oh. Um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, there could be a question where, and you'll see this on one of the practice tests. So let me write down the formula. This is actually HC over lambda. This is from your previous class. If you had to calculate delta, it's a little funny in that, let's say, uh, so the first one, if we want to find delta for this compound here, we know it's orange, but in this formula, you have to use the absorbed color. If you see orange, is that the color absorbed? It's not. This is the color reflected back to your eyeball. So the absorbed color is blue. So if I wanted to calculate delta for this original compound, I do not use a lambda of 600. I would use a lambda of? Like 450. Okay, so if you're calculating a delta, use the absorbed value, not the reflected value. Can you do it? Okay, uh, example, I'll do this one. What's delta for the orange? That would be H, and I'll give you this on the test 6.626. This is a constant, times 10 to the minus 34. 
C is also constant, 2.9979 times 10 to the 8th. And divided by lambda, it would be the absorbed color, which is 450 nanometers, or change that to meters. Whatever that is. Is that okay? So I'm using, again, the absorbed color. This is the blue range is absorbed. Yeah? Um, are those constants that you given on your exam? Constants definitely are given on the exam. All constants. H, C, F, Avogadro's number. Other constants you don't even need will be there. Yeah? All constants are definitely given. Okay, I want to do one more thing with the color. Okay. Let me draw one more compound. Oh. Yeah, I know. Oh, I got a great one. What color is it? No, not the color I wrote it. <laughs> right, it is green though. Okay, we do all our geniuses. Okay, uh, the actual compound. Well, what's the charge on titanium? <laughs> For plus, I want to know how many electrons it has. Let's get my periodic table out. Titanium's in what column? The fourth. If it's four plus, how many d electrons are there? Zero. Zero. What color is it? Colorless. You could say white or colorless. I'd accept either. So whenever it's a d zero or a d ten. D0 or D10, this is a D0, D colorless. Question? Yeah? What if there's a D in the middle? Okay, there's a D somewhere. Which D is this D? Like in, in, in between 0 and 10. In between 0 and 10. Like you said D0. D0, that's this one. Or D10 is always colorless. So does it matter if it's like D3? The ones in the middle are not colorless, usually. So D1 to 9 could be colorless, but probably not. So I specifically gave you a question that I knew would be colorless. Yeah. If it's not this kind of question, it would be this kind of question. Yeah, that's the only two options. Yes. You, yes, she's asking how do you find the electronic configuration. You'll always find the charge first, then find the column that that transition metal exists in and subtract those two numbers. That tells you the number of electrons. Yes? Four S one three D nine if it's neutral. Uh, four three D ten if it's neutral. Yes. Uh, copper plus one. So anything uh, that get that have a four S. Yeah, you're right. One three D ten. Let me, get, let me track it. Let me write this out. She asked me about copper. I got to write it out. I can't think for some reason. This would be 4S1, 3D10. This question wouldn't apply because it's at 11 electrons. It does not apply. Do you see what I mean? 10 plus 1, 11. It doesn't apply. You can't do 11 or 12 with this kind of question. So I'm spiking the question for you. <laughs> 